Hi everyone and welcome to the latest issue of Bag and Board. This is a pretty special issue um, this time around because it's my London Super Comic Con haul video. Um, LSCC took place at the Excel Centre last weekend the 20th and 21st of February 2016. I had originally intended that I was going to try and do this as a live haul video but because of a combination I think of the quality of the camera in my laptop and also my very poor internet connection when I looked at my previous live video um, the quality of it wasn't very good and I figured that if I had a lot of stuff that I wanted to show you I wanted to be able to show you properly so it's going to be recorded but I hope that uh, doesn't detract from it in any way anyway LSCC it was amazing as always. This time was the first time that I went for the full weekend. In previous years, I've just gone down for the Saturday and usually stayed overnight in London the Friday night and then gone home on the Saturday night. But this time I decided I wanted to get the most out of the experience. So I stayed Friday and Saturday nights and I spent the full day there on Saturday and up until just after lunchtime on Sunday when I had to get my train back home. As always, it was an amazing convention. Um, it seems to get better every year. Uh, the spotlight guests were amazing. Um, they included the likes of David and Meredith Finch, Brian Bolland, Marv Wolfman, Frank Cho, and even the people that were in Artist Sally. There were some really, really top draw people. Um, as always, it wasn't just the convention itself. That was what made it such a good time it was the people that I met up with um, a group of people from the um, YCC Facebook page who I originally friended through Facebook but because of meeting up at LSCC for the past couple of years have become really good friends with um, so this year was no exception I managed to meet up with Lewis Adam um, Adam's friend Mark, who I met for the first time, uh, Mark, um, Stephen, uh, Jack, and mm, last but not least, Sam. Um, thanks to all of you guys, once again, you turned what would have been a really good event into a brilliant event. After the Saturday uh, at the convention, we all went to a nearby hotel for a couple of hours and enjoyed a few drinks and some good conversation together and it was just absolutely amazing. So once again, thank uh, guys, thank you so much for making um, a brilliant weekend of it. Um, the one thing that I was upset about was um, I'd originally tried to uh, or hoped to arrange to meet up with the guys before I left on Sunday lunchtime. But I got so engrossed in um, some comic boxes that I completely forgot what time it was. And by the time I went to check, I was way over the time when I should have left. So I had to make a dash for it. So I'm really sorry about that, guys. Uh, but it was amazing. Anyway, enough prattling on. Um, you probably want to see some stuff. So what I'm going to do, I've got a heck of a lot of stuff here to get through. It's going to be quite a long video. So um, if you want to pause it now, go and get yourself a drink. We're going to get into the good stuff. Um, just a couple of bits and bobs to start with. First of all, this is my early entry weekend badge. This is what you got if you attended for both of the days and you were an early entry. I assume that the non-early entry weekend badges had a different image on. Not quite sure who that's by, but it's quite nice. And it'll be a nice addition to my um, LSCC badge collection. Then, this was the uh, convention program guidebook. Um, as always, it's a nice little booklet. Got a map of the layout there. At the top, this was where Artist Sally was, all along this row. And then the rest of it was taken up by uh, convention booths. And then, basically the rest of it 
is little blurbs on all of the artists that were there and there's these little boxes where you could get signatures if you wanted to so again a nice little souvenir of the weekend right where to start i think the best place to start would actually be showing you the comics and books that i took with me um, solely with the intention of getting them signed so got a pretty big bag of those i'll take out a chunk and then we'll move on to the next chunk so to begin with one of the artists who I was really excited when I saw that she was going to be on the uh, guest list as I've become a bit of a fan of hers and that's Maria Laura Sanapo. I first became aware of Maria's work uh, from her covers that she's been doing on the recent run of Xenoscope's Grim Tales of Terror. She's been doing some amazing cover work and then I found that she was doing some of the interiors on the DC comic bombshell series which I've been picking up so I'm just going to move that a little bit over so the first book that I got Maria to sign um, was Grim Tales of Terror number two sorry about a little bit of glare the signature's just there Then Tales of Terror number three. Again, sound on the leg. This is a character called Keres, and she actually appears in every issue of Tales of Terror because she's kind of a, a death character. Whenever you see her, she signifies death. Um, so a little interesting tidbit for you there. And then Grim Tales of Terror number four with a nicely placed signature just there. Then moving on to uh, the copies of Bombshells that I got Maria to sign. There's Bombshells issue number six with the signature just there. And Bombshells issue number eight which Maria signed down here. And also attending the show in Artis Alley was Laura Braga, who's also been working on this series. And I got her to sign just up there. This is the only issue that I had with me that Laura was actually involved in, but it was nice to get a double signature. Then moving on to another creator that I'm a big fan of her work. And she also is, um, heavily involved with some of the Xenoscope books, although lately she has also been working with Brian Polito on some of the Kickstarters that he's been doing for Lady Death. Um, but it was Xenoscope books that I took mainly for her to sign. So we've got Oz, Reign of the Witch Queen, and this is issue number two of the latest six series Oz um, series. So that's number two and Sabine signed it down there. It's got a really nice signature actually. And then there's issue number six of the same series signing gold pen just down there. You can actually see there's the signature that kind of she did on the original piece of artwork and there's the signature that she did for me. I also took for Sabine to sign um, issue five of Coven. And only just recently been published is issue 43 of Grimm's Wonderland. And I'm just trying to show you the signature there without it being glary too much. It's a really nice, uh, I believe that's a Paolo Pantalena cover. So, sorry, I'm getting mixed up. Of course it's a Sabine cover. Uh, I think Paolo Pantalena did the the issue previous to that which was a really nice cover. 
And then I also took a copy of, of her cover of um, this one shot, which was one of the 10th anniversary specials that Xenoscope did. Um, and this was the Alice in Wonderland, which she signed in black down near the bottom there. Incidentally, she was also doing um, a signing at the Xenoscope booth because they had quite a big booth that was there. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, they were actually giving out free copies of the same comic. So I thought it'd be silly not to get uh, another copy of it. So that one signed in gold down at the bottom there. A couple of um, bits and pieces that I'd actually picked up prior to the con specifically to get Sabine to sign, um, well, one of them was this issue of Robin Hood from Xenoscope. This is the ongoing series and it's number 18, but I really, really like this cover. So even though I don't pick up this actual series, I decided to get this so that I could get it signed. And that's signed, where are we? Just down there. And something that I'd actually forgotten about, um, but one of the rewards that I got for one of the Lady Death Kickstarter projects that I backed was um, an exclusive cover that Sabine's done. Um, and this was kind of um, a stretch reward that was introduced. So if you backed any of the previous um now then, was this a lady? No, this wasn't actually for a Lady Death Kickstarter. It was for another Kickstarter that was done by Brian Polito. Um, and I think it was the Zack the Zombie Exterminator one. But if you backed that and you backed one of these pre previous two Lady Death Kickstarters, they threw in this free Lady Death cover and got there in the end. And it's this one, which uh, Sabine did the artwork for. Apologies for the nipples. Should you apologise for nipples? I don't know. Um, and that's signed down there. And it was funny when I was talking to Sabine when she was signing my books, she said to me, did you do the Kickstarter? Did you back it? And I said, yeah, which it's not really funny, is it? But there you go. OK, delving into the bag for some more books. Again. This is all books that I already had in my collection or I bought specifically to take to LSCC to get signed. So moving on to um, Meredith Finch, who was there with uh, David. So I took along my Wonder Woman issue number 47, which is the Harley Quinn Little Black Book variant. And Meredith Finch signed it just at the top there. And a book that I'd actually specifically bought um, the Wednesday immediately before the con. And I was really, really hoping because I bought it over the Internet. And I was really, really hoping that it arrived before I went to the con to get it signed. And that was the Neil Adams variant of Wonder Woman number 49. Luckily, it turned up. This is an absolutely gorgeous cover. Um, and the signature looks really good just down there. The next lot of books that I took, um, Meredith was telling me when she was signing them that she was really surprised because she was assuming that because she's on Wonder Woman at the moment, um, that most of the books that she got took for, to her for signing would be Wonder Woman. But she was really surprised that um, quite a few people had taken along books from a, a series that she'd done for Xenoscope, which was The Little Mermaid. Um, she wrote the story for this. Um, and it was good because she was attending and also Mike Crome, who did the covers, or four of the covers for the series, he was there as well. So I was able to get these books double signed. So there's Little Mermaid number two. And that's signed by Mike down there, who did the cover. And where is it signed by Meredith? Ah, just at the bottom. A little bit more difficult to sign. Both in gold pen. And then we have 
issue number three. There's Mike's signature and Meredith up at the top. Number four, gorgeous cover. Mike there and Meredith down at the bottom. And number five, both signing black pen on this one, Mike there and Meredith Finch at the bottom there. Right, moving on to another creator, and when I saw that he was going to be there, I was just beyond excited because this guy is an absolute legend in the comic book world and responsible for some iconic pieces of work. <coughs> and um, basically, he's the one person who I will buy things simply because he is attached to them. So even if it's things that I'm not particularly interested in or picking up, I will buy them because he's involved. Um, his work is just so amazing. And that's Brian Bolland, the one and only. So I took a few things along for him. Um, copy of Animal Man number six. What I did, I just selected um, a few of my favourite pieces uh, to get signed. That is an absolutely gorgeous cover, um, signed by Brian down there. I'm sorry if my throat's a bit husky. I was at the rugby last night and um, I was doing a lot of shouting. So that's why I've got my drink. Then I took along a couple of my favourite covers from um, the Batman Gotham Knights series, uh, issue number 15. Signed at the top there. Absolutely gorgeous Poison Ivy. And issue number 43. Signed there. Now, my good friend Stephen, um, he showed me a book um, a few weeks ago that he bought. And um, I told him how much I liked it. And he actually did me a little random act of kindness. And he sourced another copy of it and he sent it to me, which I was so grateful for. So thanks again, mate. I really appreciate it. And this was another one that I had to get signed. Legends of the Dark Knight number 50. Uh, and Brian's done a really nice signature down there. He said to me when it was signing it, he said, it's a shame to spoil this cover. And I said to him, well, to me, it's not spoiling it. I can see it from his point of view. But to me, getting Brian's signature was just amazing. I also took some um, books down with me to get signed. Knowing who the guests were going to be. So I took uh, volume seven of Wonder Woman to get signed by Meredith Finch. Just at the top there. This was um, the first volume that the Finches have been involved in on Wonder Woman. The beginning of their run. Then for Brian Bolland to sign, I took, um, obviously, uh, The Killing Joke. The only problem with this, when I got back to the hotel, excuse me, on the night time, um, when I'd taken my books for signing, I took the dust jackets off so that there was no risk of them getting damaged. And obviously when uh, Brian was signing this, he didn't realise what was the front cover and what was the back cover. So he actually ended up signing the back of the book. But no matter. I also took... Because um, Kevin O'Neill was going to be there, um, another absolutely legendary creator, um, obviously mainly known, well, predominantly known for his work with uh, Alan Moore, um, I took my copy of the League of Extraordin Extraordinary Gentlemen Volume 3. I do have um, 
an omnibus paperback of the first two volumes, but I decided that um, it'd be nice to get my hardcover signed. So I took volume three. Um, Kevin O'Neill signed it. Just there. Once again, um, Avatar, who had a booth at the con, played a bit of a crafty, because last year, um, Garth Ennis was their special guest. And basically, as long as you bought anything from their booth, you were able to get Garth to sign as many books as you wanted to. It wasn't too bad, because you could just buy a 3 99 book and then get anything signed. But with Kevin O'Neill, it was a bit different, because... What you had to actually do was buy a copy of this, which is um, Cinema Purgatorio. Now, this is a new Kickstarter that's just been done by Alan Moore, and it's his latest uh, uh, comic, even though this is a hardback book. And this is basically going to be a monthly anthology. Um, different people involved in this, apart from Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill, there's going to be people like Max Brooks, uh, uh, Kieran Gillen um, people like that and Garth Ennis I believe is involved as well um, but what they did they did a kickstarter for issue 1 um, for this hardcover edition which contains I think it's an extra 16 pages over and above what the published issue 1 will include basically um, the only way that you could get things signed by Kevin O'Neill who was only signing at the Avatar booth was to buy a copy of this which was £25. Well, I'd already done the Kickstarter anyway, so I had a copy of this waiting to be picked up, which meant that I could get anything signed anyway. So anyway, so this is my copy of that, which I got signed. The other books that I took for um, Kevin to sign were, that's it actually, was my copy of my huge hardcover of martial law where are we? ah she signed at the bottom there right i also saw um one of the spotlight guests marv wolfman another absolutely legendary comic book uh, figure while I was queuing uh, for Brian Bolland, because I decided uh, Brian Bolland was the main guy that I wanted to see over the weekend. So um, as soon as we got entry into the con, I made it um, straight over to the spotlight area and got in the queue for Brian Bolland. Well, as usually happens to me, um, when I get in a queue for somebody at the start of a con, they're inevitably late. And Brian was a little bit late and I was getting a little bit twitchy about it. I saw Lewis, my friend, in the queue for Marv Wolfman, so I just passed my book over to him and asked him if he'd get it signed for me, which he did. So uh, it's my copy of Crisis on Infinite Earths Deluxe Hardcover, which I got, uh, or Lewis got, Marv Wolfman to sign for me. I did meet Marv later, which um, I've got something to show you for that. So there we are, Marv Wolfman. Okay, the only other book that I got signed is one that I bought at the con um, with Ian Churchill being there and that is this recently re-released um, Supergirl which Ian did a lot of the artwork for. Really like it. it's got the Michael Turner cover. So I went up, uh, Ian was at Artist Alley so I went up when he was very quiet at one time and just got Ian to sign it there. Only paid £10 for this. It's a nice thick trade. I think it contains, um, yeah, uh, Supergirl issues 0 to 10 and number 12. Now the good thing was, with staying for two nights this year, um, what would normally happen is that basically um, in the past when I've just stayed for one night, I check out of the hotel on Saturday morning and everything that was going with me I would have to carry around all day so you can imagine what it would have been like carrying all of these books around for the entire day it would have just been absolutely murder on the shoulders 
luckily, um, because I was still che- um, you know, checked into the hotel, staying another night, round about lunchtime on the Saturday, I was able to go back to my hotel, which was only a couple of um, stops along the Docklands Light Railway, and drop off all of these things back at the, the hotel, and just take a small bag back out with me, with stuff that I needed to carry. So I was really glad that I was able to get rid of all this stuff um, and not carry it around for the rest of the day. Okay, what next? Um, Right, yeah. When I found out that Maria Sanapo was going to be at the con, um, which was before Christmas I found out, I actually contacted her by Facebook um, and I pre-ordered some things from her one of which was her sketchbook which I collected at the con really nice book it is some beautiful illustrations in there Um, Maria signed it for me inside now one of the things with Maria is that if you buy a a copy of a sketchbook you get a free sketch Um, and she asked me before Christmas what I wanted doing and I decided to go for Keras, the character from the death character from Grim Tales of Terror. Um, so that was another thing that I got to pick up when I met Maria at the con. Um, subsequently, as soon as I got home, I got the sketch framed. You may, if you follow me on Facebook, you'll have seen this already. But there it is. Original piece of artwork from Maria Laura Sanapo. Now, considering I paid £20 for the sketchbook and this came free, that is an amazing deal. So if you like Maria's work and you want to get in on the ground floor before she becomes um, really, really famous, which I'm sure she will, um, contact her on Facebook. Um, she lives in Italy, but obviously she'll ship anywhere you want her to ship. Um, charges a few pounds extra, but it's well worth it for getting a sketchbook and a piece of art of this quality for £20. So I'm just trying to decide where this is going to go in my um, living room. Now the other thing is that I actually commissioned Maria to do a sketch cover for me. And here it is. Again, you may have seen this already. I actually um, sent in the mail before Christmas my copy, my blank copy of Batman and Robin Eternal. And I asked her to do me a bombshell style Wonder Woman. And there it is. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, let's move on to, I think we'll do prints next. And I'm going to stay with, uh, let's get these over here. I'm going to stay with Maria because just before the con, she actually um, on Facebook put up a picture that she'd um, only just completed. And I messaged her and I said, please, 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 will you make sure that you have some prints of this in London? because I absolutely love it, and she did. And I think she'd only done 20 of these. Superman and Wonder Woman. This was 15 pounds, and it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And she signed it there for me. I mentioned earlier that um, my Marv Wolfman book was actually um, signed for me when I passed it to my friend Lewis to get it signed. But I noticed a bit later in the day on the Saturday that Marv was actually a bit quiet at his table. So I went over uh, because I noticed that he was selling some really nice prints. So I decided to get a copy of this one, which is obviously his cover for Amazing Spider-Man 194. To actually buy the comic would be really expensive, so I thought a print was the next best thing. Um, I've signed it there. 
Oh, there's a bit of a sticky mark on here that I'm going to have to get rid of. Um, something else that I pre-ordered before I went to the con. Um, one of the exclusives that uh, LSCC were doing this year was some prints by Frank Cho, some Jungle Girl prints. So I decided to pre-order the one that was my favourite one, and that's this one. This again, uh, this one was £15, and it was already pre-signed by Frank down there. Really nice print. And it's got the London Super Comic Convention logo down there. Now, when I was getting my book signed by Meredith Finch, one thing that I noticed was that she had some really, really nice Wonder Woman prints that she was selling. And these were only £10 each. And one of my favourite variant covers that I've seen for Wonder Woman and is now going for absolutely crazy prices, she was selling a print of. So this was an absolute no-brainer. No that was only £10. Now, if you were at the con, you will know that the queues for David Finch were absolutely crazy. They didn't even seem to move. I think people, he was doing sketches on the day, and I think each sketch would have been taking him about half an hour to do. So basically, it just didn't seem as though the queue was moving. So even though I had some books that I would have liked David to sign, um, it just wasn't worth uh, waiting in the queue to try and get that done. Anyway, when I bought this print off Meredith Finch, she passed it over after she'd signed it and got David to sign it up there. So I'm really happy because at least now that I've got something that's double signed by both of the Finches. But that is an absolute gorgeous, gorgeous print. Okay. Right. Something that I wanted to try and get a copy of before the con with the intention of getting it signed but um, it was a little bit too expensive for me so in the end I didn't I didn't bother but it was the Brian Bollum variant cover for issue one of the Dark Knight 3 the master race anyway luckily when I got into the con on the Sunday morning um, the first thing I did was walk past the Forbidden Planet stall and they actually had one copy of this and it was only £10, which is the cheapest I've ever seen it. So naturally, I bought a copy and got it signed by Brian. So I actually got to meet Brian twice over the weekend, which was really good. But that is a superb cover. The last thing that I actually got was um, something I've never heard of before, but there were uh, a couple of people from um, an independently produced comic, and it's called Naomi Indigo. And the basically the two brainchilds behind it, which was a guy and this lady here, they were there um, selling copies of this. And what's unusual about this is that the interiors are not actually drawn. It's all photographed. Um, so it's a very photorealistic comic book, but done in a comic book style. And basically, it's a multi-format thing. There are actually uh, web episodes on the internet that you can watch that tie in with the comic as well. Although you don't have to read the comic to understand the web videos or vice versa. Anyway, they were, they were selling copies of this, looked really interesting, so I picked up a copy and um, the lady who plays Naomi, who's called Jenny Jacobs, um, she actually personally signed this copy to me. And then also they were giving out these flyers, so I thought I may as well get her to sign that as well. So she's actually signed that um, as her character rather than as herself which is quite nice. And she was wearing latex. Now a couple of bits and bobs that I picked up. Um, some people had business cards that were giving out. So I picked up this one for Island Reed, who is a very famous cosplayer. She was there at the Hot Flips stall 
who, if you're familiar with them, they sell a lot of bags and boards, uh, top loaders, that kind of stuff. Uh, so she was their special guest. So I picked up that and I also got a picture taken with her as well. And then this guy, who I won't attempt to pronounce his name because I'll get it hideously wrong, but I know a lot of the YCC guys, they actually got commissions done by him. But he had this really nice business card, so I thought I'd pick up that. And then I also got this postcard, which I really liked. Um, now then. This looks like it's a company called Gerb Art. G-E-R-B-A-R-T. And they did this really interesting concept that they called Dark Side Girls. And this is what they call a femme trooper. So they were kind of mashing up kind of evil characters with these sexy ladies. And I really like this uh, Stormtrooper. Uh, I think I paid a pound for this. And they were doing prints as well, uh, larger size versions of this. Really, really nice. Sorry, that was my Kindle. Okay, we've been going about half an hour now, so I'm, I'm aware that I'm taking up a lot of your time. But the last thing I want to show you is... I already mentioned that Hot Flips were there, and they were selling um, a lot of comic-related products, like bags and boards. But they also had a secondary stall. I'll just have a quick slap. They had a secondary stall there as well for the entire weekend. And basically what they've done is brought across from America boxes and boxes of comics that initially on the Saturday they were selling them for £2 each. Um, and if you bought five and spent £10, you got a six one free. Well, by the Sunday, the price had come, come down to a pound each. If you bought 25, you got them for £20. And you could fill a comic box for £75. So by Sunday lunchtime, it was going a bit crazy. And that was what actually made me late leaving the convention. But I did pick up some really, really nice things. Um, and these were all like a pound each, but I got a little bit of a discount. Um, all of these are in really, really nice condition. So I got Wonder Woman 98, which is a Bolland cover. Unfortunately, by the time I bought this, it was... Actually, yeah, it is a Bolland cover. Um, by the time I bought this, uh, it was too late for me to go back to the Bolland store to get it signed, uh, which was a bit unfortunate. But I got that. Like I said, these were all a pound. Then I got a couple for my Uncanny X-Men run. Number 147. Beautiful condition. Absolutely gorgeous condition. Number 150, which is a double-sized issue. And number 151, sorry. And number 187. Now, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you may have seen one where I mentioned about my uh, copy of uh, Wolverine number one that I uh, picked up quite a while ago which was the not the uh, Miller miniseries, but the ongoing series. Um, and I decided what I was going to do was try and pick up round about the first 10 or 12 issues of that run. Uh, obviously, it was a long run, and I don't really want to get into the, um, the thing of trying to pick up the entire run. So I thought I'll try and get the first 10 or 12. Anyway, when I was at the Hot Flip stall, um, I picked up some issues that are going to go towards this. So I got number five, number seven, and number nine. And as I said, these are all in great condition. 
I also picked up this, um, not particularly because I'm collecting anything like this, but I just like the cover. And for a pound, you can't go wrong. And that's Kazar. The Savage is dead. Long live Shanna the Savage. And that's issue number 22. I like jungle. I like jungle covers. Um, I'm not sure why. Anything jungle related. Probably when the jungle women are wearing skimpy costumes. Now a book I've already got. I've got the full run of this, but uh, because it was only a pound, uh, this is one of my favourite covers, and it's issue number one of Dawn. So I certainly wasn't going to leave that in the bargain boxes and I also got while I was at it uh, Crypt of Dawn number one nice cover then I got this uh, from Image Comics Spawn Batman crossover by Frank Miller and Todd McFarlane this is one of those square bound books very nice for a pound. Never read this. I also picked up from Frank Miller, again, a pound. Sin City, The Babe War Red, and other stories. Catwoman Defiant. This is another square bound, so pretty decent read. It's got one of those shiny bits where it says Catwoman. Now, one of the biggest bargains I've ever got in my life. Um, and before I saw the twist in the tail with this, um, I thought I've got to pick it up anyway because of the cover. Um, they had two copies of this and it's a G.I. Joe book, number two. And it's um, an Adam Hughes variant. So as soon as I saw it was an Adam Hughes cover, I knew I had to get it. But then I saw that it was actually signed by Adam Hughes. I couldn't believe it. And they actually had two copies, both signed by Adam Hughes. Isn't that a gorgeous cover? So naturally, I wasn't going to leave those there. When I'd actually made my purchase and bought the books off the guy, uh, he had the money, I had the books. I said to him, it's not often you've come across signed Adam Hughes books in a bargain box. And he looked a bit crestfallen and he kind of just said to me, well, there's not a lot I can do about it now. And I thought, no. My best bargain of the weekend. That's it. That was my London Super Comic Con for 2016. Uh, I can see we've been going nearly three quarters of an hour. I think this is the longest video I've ever done. So if you've stuck with it to the end, all I can say is congratulations and thank you so much for watching. Um, apologies that I've not done a video for maybe about three, four weeks. But the whole reason is that I've been saving my money for London Super Comic Con. So I've not really been buying anything apart from my regular pull. So I've not really had anything to show off. Um, I have kind of got a couple of things that I've put to one side now for my next video. Um, so hopefully that will be in a couple of weeks time. But all I can say is uh, once again before I go, thanks to the uh, YCC guys for an amazing weekend last weekend in London. Um, and thanks to everybody who's watched this video. I really appreciate it. I've got I think about 230 subscribers now, which is really amazing. So thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, um, please give me a thumbs up and leave any comments. Uh, I'll always reply to my comments. If you're not a subscriber, uh, I'd be more than happy if you subscribe to my channel. Um, if you don't like the video, please tell me why. Um, I know I've got a ridiculous northern accent. Um, don't hold that against me. Um, but please tell me why if you don't like it. Um, but once again, uh, thanks to everybody for watching and take care 
enjoy your comics and I'll see you when I do my next video. Take care.